In this tutorial, we're going to look at setting up a basic enemy, making it collide with bullets and um, and then destroying itself. And we're going to use code uh, for the most part to do this, although we will use some drag and drop events. So what I've done here is I've just set up a very simple sprite enemy. Um, what you're going to want to do is resize your, uh, or make this size 16 by 16 when you make it. So new 16 by 16, fill it with a color and then center that sprite there. And for your player sprite, you'll want to resize that. So edit sprite, just make a new 16 by 16 image, or you can go transform stretch and stretch it by 50%. So scaling it down, it's up to you. Uh, and then center that one. So it's at eight, eight for the origin. This is going to make it a little bit easier to navigate the um, rooms later on. Now you'll notice in here, I've also uh, fixed up the room and I've put my player somewhere in there. It always gets put in the center. So make sure you leave that center part empty. Um, and I've created an object for my enemy. Now this object enemy, I'm going to make a new one because you can see here, I've got a few extra things and this is actually going to be covered in a later video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this enemy out just for now and I'm going to create a new object and we're going to call it object enemy one. Now you can call yours object enemy. That's, that's fine. Uh, now in here, we're going to add up, uh, add a simple create event. And in here, we're going to add in two initial variables, enemy speed. And I'm going to make that equal to four and then enemy health equals, uh, I'll make that equal to five. So the reason that I'm giving them these names instead of just speed and health is two reasons. Speed and health are reserved words in Game Maker. Um, speed refers to the actual speed of this object in the physics system. And health is a global variable that can be used to refer to the health of the player, but it's never a good idea to use it because even here, it's not referring to the health of this object. It's referring to some global health variable. So I'm giving them um, prefixes at the start here, uh, just so that I know if I'm looking at code, what this variable actually does. Now, what I'm then doing is assigning the value of four to it. So a single equal sign is what's called an assignment. And the computer will know that the value associated with enemy speed is equal to four in this case. So you may notice earlier on in some videos that I've used double equal signs in some places. And the difference is that that's a comparison. We're kind of saying, is enemy speed equal to the value of four? Whereas this, we're saying make enemy speed equal to four. So there is a subtle difference um, and it's gonna be really important later on. Um, for the time being, these are gonna be, these two variables are going to be enough and let's make sure we uh, put that title at the top there, set up initial variables. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna put in a collision event here. I'm gonna put in a collision with the bullet. The reason I'm not gonna do it in the step event and with code is it just, it takes a lot of code and it's much quicker just to do it this way here. But we're still gonna do this part in code. Um, uh, determine collision effects. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the bullet that's the other object in this collision so I can write with the other. I'm gonna tell that what to do. I'm gonna instance destroy. Whenever I use this special function with, uh, it takes an argument. And in this case, the argument that I'm giving it is the other object in there. I'm telling it, do all this stuff here with the other object. I could say with um, object wall and then but this case here, when it collides with a bullet, it would destroy all walls in the game, which doesn't really make much sense. So I'm just gonna do the other object in the collision. Other is something that only works with collision events. Mouse has started to lag out a bit there. Um, this is something that only works with collision events. Okay, so other. And we're gonna destroy that instance. And also, we're going to set the enemy health to minus equal one. Now what this minus equal does, it's another assignment. So there's a whole lot of different assignments. 
Um, we've got equals to, we can have plus equals, minus equals, um, times equals. I don't think divided equals work, so uh, I've not used it, so I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, but what it does is it's a short way of saying equals enemy health minus one. So we can do that. And what the computer will do is it will say, okay, what's the current enemy health? All right, it's five. Um, what's five minus one? Well, that's four. So then I go, okay, enemy health equals four. The next time it does it, next time it collides with another bullet, it'll look at it and go enemy health equals, all right, what's the current enemy health? It's four. So what's four minus one? Well, that's three. And I'll assign it back to here. So what we can just do is do minus equals one. And this d d increments, decrements, um, enemy health by one. I find it easier to read, it's shorter, it makes more sense. Um, this is basically saying subtract one from that value there. And then I'm gonna have some code here. If enemy, enemy health, I'll get it out eventually, there we go. If enemy health is less than or equal to zero, now here's the comparison. So this is, we're saying, if this is true. And this here is what's called an expression. An expression is always going to be true or false. So for example, uh, the statement, I am a teacher and I have dark hair. That is a true statement. Okay, it, it, we, can, it, we can objectively look at myself and go, okay, I'm a teacher, yes and I have dark hair, yes, both those things are true, so that is a true statement. Um, we'll look at combining statements a little bit later on, but at the moment, this is objectively testable. We can look at the value of enemy health and we can say, is it less than or equal to zero? If it is, we're gonna do these things. If it's not, we're just gonna ignore everything in here. So what we wanna do is instance destroy. Now you'll notice that these two things are the same, this one, however, is gonna destroy our object enemy. This one will destroy the bullet. So what's happening here is, let's put a little code comment here. Um, always destroy the bullet when, when it collides. And then here, if the enemy has no health, destroy the enemy. So we don't need to comment this line here. It's pretty obvious what it does. It subtracts one from the enemy health. And this is the kind of commenting you should be doing. You don't need to go destroy the instance because that's pretty obvious from what that is there. So we don't wanna waste all our time writing the same line of code twice. Now, if I put this enemy in the room, I'll just put a few of them in. For me, it's enemy one because the other one has different code on it. And I'll just go in here I will go into my object player and make sure I have more than five ammo. I'll just turn that up to 50 for now. All right, so I should have made this path shorter, but I've got to walk all the way around the other room. Other side of the room, you can see it's pointing towards my mouse. I've got plenty of ammo here. Ammo gets destroyed when it hits the wall. One, two, three, four, Five, done. One, two, three, four, five. And you notice that the bullet is also getting destroyed and then that's working. Keep going there. So there's a very, very basic enemy. Um, it doesn't move at the moment. Now we could, we could do some movement. So what I might do is add in very simple movement script here for the enemy. So let's click step and we're gonna add in a execute code. So from here, let's just make it move north, unless it hits a wall, and then it's gonna move south. So we'll go into here and give it a new variable. Enemy um, direction equals, and we'll make it up. They're all gonna start moving up the screen. Okay, so we go back into this step event and I'll just pause this video for a sec. 
So what we're going to be doing here is checking to see whether or not, uh, sorry, checking to see the direction that the enemy's moving and then um, move them in that direction. If there's a wall in the way, then we're going to flip that direction around and make them move the other way. So this is very simple movement, which I'm going to replace in the next few videos with some pathfinding. Um, but let's just get started on doing some simple code here. So if enemy de equals up, and this should be an assignment. I want to check if this value is equal to that. I know it is because that's what I said it to just a second ago, um, but we're going to um, check if it's equal to down as well. Our enemy is only going to move up and down. It's going to be a very simple movement. Uh, if it's equal to up, then we're going to check if the place above it is free. If place free, it might actually be place empty. Uh, I just always have to check these ones. I always forget. Place free and place empty both do similar things. Place free. Yeah, place free is the one that I want. It's it's going to check for solids. So place free. If place three, x, and then y minus enemy speed. Now what this is doing is checking the x position, which is the vertic uh, the horizontal. That doesn't need to change because we want to check up and down. And because I want to move up, I want to check the area above it. So it's going to do that. Now I'm nesting these if statements. Notice how I'm tabbing them in. It makes it a lot easier to read. So if place free, x, um, comma, y minus enemy speed. And then I'm going to make the pl uh, player move. So I'm going to go y minus equals enemy speed. And down here, I'm going to write else. So if there is something in the way, if this is not true, so it returns and says, hey, this place is not free. Well, then I'm going to go enemy de equals, so assign it the value of down. Now from here, I'm not going to show you all this code. Um, I'm going to see, I would like you to see if you can figure it out, but it is going to start off like this. If enemy de equals down. What is it going to do in this case? Now it is going to look very similar here, but you're going to need to switch some variables around and think about what's actually going to be taking place. Um, if you want to write out the logic, the pseudocode and check with the teacher, see if the pseudocode's right, see if you've got the logic right and then get help with the code, that's fine. Um, but take, a, uh, take an attempt at doing this. I'm just going to pause the video, write it out and show you what it should do. So this here is what it should do, okay? Your enemy should kind of bounce up and down. Um, when they hit a solid wall, they will flip and go in the other direction. They'll just do that forever until until I get destroyed. Um, there is actually a lot of games you can make with this kind of art style, I suppose, maybe a bit fancier, uh, and obstacles, just moving left and right. Now, the last thing we want to do uh, is to add a collision um, actually, no, we'll do that later on because that's going to be complex and we're going to have health bars and all kinds of things for this player here. So we won't worry about doing the collision with this enemy um, just yet. But take the time to attempt to do that. Okay, so I can still shoot this and when it's gone, it's gone. I won't mouse over that accidentally like I did last time. Make sure you put the forward slashes in there three times at the start. Um, now, just a just a, a notice in the next video, um, you can use this enemy as a basis and then build on it. Or because this one already has the collision with the object, and the one in the next video doesn't have that collision in there, so you can remove the basic movement from this, or you could make it a completely different enemy. Okay, so you could have two different types of enemies: one that just moves up and down, and another one that hunts the player down and roams the hallways. Um, so it's up to you how you do it, but keep in mind I made the next video before I made this one. So the next one doesn't have have object enemy one in there. Um, but if you're following through these and taking the time to work through the, the work that's been set, you shouldn't have much difficulty actually following along.